Hey there guys, how's it going? My name is Sumat Chatterjee from the Flow Zone Academy and I'm a flow state coach, which means that I help you feel better and perform better. Today I'm talking about the seven mistakes that coaches make when they're right about to start their coaching business. So a lot of coaches get into this business understanding the fact that, oh hey, anyone can become a coach nowadays and so I'm going to step into this business. First of all, you want to start to understand that yes, though there might be a little bit of truth to that, you've also got to understand what you bring to the table. So the first thing that I would tell you, which is a mistake, is that a lot of coaches that are out there are following some prepackaged model of coaching. They understand it. They know they've gone through some kind of a certification program or gotten some certificate online and now they're calling themselves a coach and then they're just, you know, going out there with that knowledge and not adding any of their own flavor into the business itself. And I think that's where a lot of coaches are sort of lacking in that is that they have all the resources, they've done all the inner work, they they have all of the pieces together but they're not speaking from their own truth in their personal experience. And that's a shame. Like I've done, like I decided that because there are so many coaches out there, I'm going to actually study this at a master's level, right? And that's what I chose to do and I understood the different models there. There's the grow model. There's, there's many different kinds of models, right? That you follow and you, you sort of have to establish yourself as someone in the industry that, you know, people go towards. However, at the same time, I understood also like, oh, Tony Robbins does it this way, or somebody else does it this way. What I'm doing essentially is, this is what my business coach says, is with new innovation comes new ignorance, okay? New innovation creates new ignorance. So when, you, when you're when you a coach, when you're new into the industry, you are going to be like many other coaches out there, kind of lost, looking for a niche, looking around, you know, not really knowing what to do, all that stuff. When there's no barrier level of entry, yes, anyone can do it. But the secret here is that you embody your life, your philosophy into your coaching business practice. So ask yourself in your own life, what have you coached yourself in? Do you have a really thriving relationship? Well, you could be a relationship coach. Are you great at really looking after your health? And maintaining that, you could be a health coach. But calling yourself a life coach, would you say that you're an expert at life? Because I don't think there's anybody out there who's an expert at living. Okay? So yeah, you could be a lifestyle coach. Right? You could be a mindset coach. Still, these are, these are vague terminologies, right? Once you get more specific and you start to embody your life philosophy through your coaching practice, not being attached to it, understanding it is an expression of you and really understanding that you want to embody the type of coaching practice that you have inside of you. You want to enjoy it. You want to place your importance in it. The second thing that I would say is niche down over time after experimenting. At first, don't give yourself a limit of Oh, I'm only going to coach. I'm only going to coach these kinds of people and only them. When you're just starting out, take on everybody, but still it's not a no barrier of entry, right? You're still giving people an application and asking them like what kind of people they are, right? Giving some kind of a metric to them, like what age are they, you know, uh, what do they do for work or and understand like you, over time there are certain people that will just gravitate towards your material. Right? So as you keep speaking your truth, coaching, doing it, refining yourself, coaching even more people, you'll gain a reference experience. As you gain that reference experience, then you can learn from those. Let's say you coach one person, now you know you have an experience with that one coachee. Don't let that one event make you destabilized or understand that's going to be the same as every other person that walks through that door, because it's not. Treat everyone on a one-to-one -one individual basis. And also, if you're doing group coaching, I know that's not the case, but you still want to be speaking to the human.
So this experimentation process where you're seeing everything and you're noticing like who's gravitating towards you, who who's getting more breakthroughs from what you're doing, what are your aha moments? Now it's time to know your niche. That's the third thing, to know your niche and to niche down. You want to be able to also create content that speaks into the listening of your clients. What do I mean by that? How are they talking to themselves in their own minds? Do they use words like bro? or dude well then you should be having those in your content are they speaking very academically and astute and very professionally well you should be having that in your copy so knowing how they sound what is their language like how would you speak to them just straight up and enter their minds and speak to them from that place because that brings trust that's a sense of safety. And also, they understand that, hey, you've been there before or whatever. You have experience in that area and you can help them. So know your niche, third thing. Fourth, respect your client's wishes or goals. They might have a goal that you might seem like, oh man, this is impossible. They're 60 years old and they, they want to go to, you know, Venus, let's say, or something like that, right? You still want to respect their goal. It is not your job to bring them back down to an earth level and get them to think realistic again. It is your job to ask them the right questions that gets them to understand it, understand it to their own level and still do what needs to be done. So when your client comes to you with a big goal or a big dream, don't tear it down. Just hear them out, respect it, understand where they're coming from. Sometimes they might be coming from a very wounded place and they want that quick fix. Like, give me the money or give me the, you know, give me the new job or give me the great body immediately. Understanding that and still speaking to that part of them that has already accomplished that goal. So treating them with respect means you believe in them more than they believe in themselves. And that's taking a stand. That's not easy to do. Right. Especially right in the beginning, you're like, whoa, huh, I'm actually believing in this person a lot and I want them to step into their best self. But I can't also, you know, push them over the edge or, you know, I can't, you know, prod them with a stick every 25 minutes either. Once you've done your thing, you let it go and it's up to them. You respect their choices, but you also respect their desires and what they want and you get much of an experience and a guarantee and an understanding with them as possible fifth thing change the mindset a lot of people have horrible mindset when it comes to coaching right they enter it thinking like oh but I have this fear that you know that everybody can be a coach and nobody will know who I am and I understand that other people are doing it, but I can't do that. You know, what will happen if I fail? Like these kinds of little, like these mental thought chatter patterns, thought chatter patterns, I like that. <laughs> they get you to a place that is counterproductive to what you want to achieve. So you want your mind predestined for success in this niche and industry already. It's everything to learn, nothing to lose. If you can come from that space that everything you're doing and new and you're innovating and you're tweaking and you're refining and you're making it better and you're getting more clients and you're and you're doing the thing and you're getting the ball rolling and then something goes wrong and then you innovate with that mistake and then you that's an asset to you and then you you ride on that asset and you make it better right you keep learning right you don't stumble at one little thing or some random person you know making a bad like view about you or whatever like don't let anything stop you from achieving that initial dream of being a coach. Because as a coach, you set your own rules, your reality, your rules. So if you have a client that you don't like working for, you're still in that mentality of scarcity, right? You're like, oh, but I must have them. And that hunger can maybe sometimes like when you're at that rock bottom space, you know, you get hungry again. And it's like, yeah, I have to do everything to survive, but you're still you're still driven by fear and not by love. It's okay to be driven by fear and vengeance and you know, I'll be getting that whatever that thing to lift you off the ground, but staying there won't maintain yourself to a to a high standard and raising the bar for yourself and being like, yes, I can, I'm doing it, I'm learning, I'm being consistent, I'm showing up even when I don't feel like it, I understand this, this is my journey, I'm having fun, I'm experimenting, I'm, you know, that 
is the mentality. I don't have anything to lose. Right? I lost a client. <laughs> Leaves more room for a better client to come in. Okay? You know, what if this happens? Or what if I don't connect with this person? Or, you know, those are, those are just stories. Sixth thing is don't be a fixer. Okay? I, I brought this up before as well, but it's like, don't be a fixer, be a facilitator. Don't like yelp and scold them to do this and that. Honestly, we're more prone not to take that advice because that's our idea of what a teacher is or maybe authority is, is this person yelling at you, right? Like some kind of a boot camp. And tough love is great, okay? I'm not saying don't have tough love. Like a little bit of that, you know, energy where you trigger the person and challenge their mindset and then they, they're on. That is great. But what I'm talking about is don't be a fixer, right? Don't micromanage your clients. Be a facilitator. Be a change catalyst and then hold space for them until they fully cultivate that seed within themselves. Don't be planting 800 seeds and, you know, getting them to you know, every little thing has to be perfect and every little product has to be a very specific way and calculated and mechanical. That doesn't create breakthrough transformation. When you get real with a person and you're speaking from your honest place of truth, but you have the tools and the techniques and the wisdom and all that stuff to back it up, that makes you a fantastic coach. So have your life, back up your claims, be the type of person that you want to be. Would you rather be coached by someone who's kind of unsure of what they're doing? Or would you rather have a coach who knows that they're the best at what they do and they're tapping into this higher power source to channel awesome learnings to you? Be a facilitator. Be a person that holds space for them and, and let them take the issues out and express themselves and feel safe to do so. Make them feel very safe in a container where you can get real with them and you can't solve their problem for them. What you can do is start the change process and you can hold their hand through the process and you can nudge them along the process, but it's not your responsibility to make sure that every little detail is made okay. That's still people pleasing, right? That's to like, do you want to serve everyone and be mediocre? Or do you want to be aligned to the right kinds of people where your life will go also to the next level? And finally, number seven, you know, is get coached yourself. It's, it's ridiculous that people who are coaches don't get coaches themselves and they feel like I can do this by myself. And uh, I, I don't have any reference experiences of this. No, I would definitely hire a coach myself. To this date, I've had like, you know, maybe eight coaches, right? <laughs> at least guiding me, even if it was like one session, I still got it because I was like, this part of my life needs to be coached and trained. And the greatest people on the planet, they also have seven or eight coaches, all right? So don't for a second think that, you know, I'm a coach and I don't need one. No, you had a mentor, you had someone pass you the baton. You can apply those things. You can get elements of those people in what you're doing. And that's the beautiful transformation. They, those people give you permission to be more of yourself because they are themselves fully. It's like a doctor saying, oh, I'm never going to see a doctor, you know, because I'm a doctor myself. No, that's ridiculous. You're a specialized coach in a specialized niche. Maybe you're, you know, a coach who's a business coach but needs a health coach, all right? That doesn't mean take away from your craft. No, of course, keep coaching. But still, we all need to be coached because we understand that no, it's okay to ask for help and it's okay to be facilitated through a process. And once we give ourselves permission to do so, our entire world starts to change. And that's what I would like for you to happen. So I hope that these were practical things that you could go through that will tell you, okay, stay away from this mistake, this mistake. And now that you know that, just step in, just start doing it, all right? The best way to be a coach is to just start coaching, okay? It's not to plan the coaching thing out. It's not to, you know, tell your friends about, oh, yeah, guess what? I'm doing this coaching thing. No, it's none of that. It's when you do the thing, you have the power.
And that is what I'm talking about, all right? Have an amazing day. May the flow be with you and stay a legend.